<laughs> All right, I want to show you something. I don't know if y'all have Canva or not, but I just wanted to show y'all something you can do with your cell phones. If you do, if you have Canva and you use it maybe with presentations in your classroom and stuff, and you've turned it to present, you've told it to present, you can come down here to the bottom and three little dots come up. Mm -hmm. You hit those three dots and you tell it to share remote control. And the coolest thing happens. A QR code comes up and you scan it with your phone, maybe. And then it puts a Canva remote control on your phone so that you can go through the slides and click through the slides without being tied to the computer. It won't click on links or anything, but it will do that. So I wanted to just show y'all that it'll, it'll do that and you can do that phone. The other cool thing you can do is it's got magic shortcuts at the top. And so you can, you know, have a party, you can drum roll. Oops, my sound is not going, but that's okay. And then you can, if you've got something that you don't want anybody to see yet, you can always open and close your curtains. You can your um, of course, when you are tired of people, you can drop the mic. And, um, you've got, the, you've got, the, you've got the fun bubbles. Um, you can tell everybody to shh. It actually does make a noise when I'm tied with sound. And then you can also blur your screen. So that is just something cool I was going to show y'all that you can do with your phones in Canva. And Canva, I know at the university level, has to be paid for. Mm -hmm. It's not free. It is free for K-12 through educators, but for the university level. And that's what I did the presentation in today was in Canva. But um, I'm Lorraine Thornton, and I taught high school mathematics for 22 years. Then I became a high school media specialist slash librarian, and <clears throat> then I moved into instructional technology. And so what I do for my school system is I go through and I research tech that they can bring into their classrooms. I vet it and decide whether it passes purple law and all that good stuff. I also go and look at the teacher use, the student use. Is it economically valid for us to be spending money on different technology and so that is basically what I do for a living now. So I've changed gears, done a lot of different things, but that is what I'm doing and this year is my 30th year, next year will be 31 and after that I'm retiring but I wanted to have a side gig so I told Ginger, I said let me come do this so I can give myself a little something on my resume so when I start doing this on the, on the side that's what I can do. And so that is who I am, that's what I do. And if I go too fast and talk too fast, because believe it or not, I know I'm here in the South and I do talk fast. I'm gonna move this little thing out of our way so we can actually see. There we go. All right, so um, Canva for Education. Folks, you can do so much in Canva, it is unbelievable. You can take a picture and put it into Canva. You can take out backgrounds. You can edit like the colors of the pictures and stuff. Change the size. You can make it into a um, animation. So you can do a lot of stuff with Canva. I know I did a lot of stuff that I will show y'all in a minute when we get to it, but that's what I did this in. So like I said, it is $120 a year. But there's just so much stuff in there. They've got templates for education that have got flow charts and just different things that you could use like as a base and then move through it and all. Um, you can make videos with it, um, icons, presentations, just you name it, Canva can do it. It's just, it's unbelievable what all it will do. All right, the big one that I wanted to talk about is Nearpod for College. Um, this is, there's a free version for y'all. I think that's what mm -hmm. you're using right now. Um, but they do have a version that is paid for at the college level. And it's not going to have what uh, a school system would have as far as pulling from oh, yeah. stock lesson plans and mm -hmm. all that stuff. It would be more of a platform for you to build things that are interactive with your students. And so one of the things that you can do with Nearpod is you can take um, 
and build a lesson from a PowerPoint that you've already got. I know y'all have already done a plethora of PowerPoint lessons. And so what I want to do right now is just kind of escape out of this for a minute and just go to Nearpod and just show you how easy it is to build a lesson. Okay, so if you log into Nearpod, it's going to take you to a platform that looks like this, and you'll have a place for my lessons. If you'll notice, I'm, I've got every school stuff on my platform, so you see all kinds of stuff. But the cool thing about it is if you've never used it before and you are trying to learn it, is you got a demo. It takes you through adding a lesson and creating a lesson, launching a live lesson, how to do it, and then it does all those lessons for you. It will walk you through that. But I'm going to just show y'all real quick how easy it is to do one. So all you've got to do is get logged in and then you go right here to create. Sorry, I'm hitting my mouse weird. And so you can create a lesson. You can combine videos with building questions. You can do an engagement activity real quick on the fly. But we're going to do a lesson real quick. And it's going to think about it. Sorry, I'm using the Wi-Fi for my phone, so it's probably being a little slow. All right, so you can upload your own files, add content and activities, add a quick, just a slide. But this is what I wanted to show you, because this is probably what you would use the most. So you can drag and drop it. So I don't know if y'all have multiple screens in your offices. Mm -hmm. So you might have this open on the left side and this, your whatever you're working with over here. You can just drag and drop it in. And that's probably the easiest thing to do. You can also upload from your computer. You can drag stuff in. If any of y'all use Google Drive for anything, you can drag stuff in. Dropbox is tied to this. And then, of course, that's your um, cloud. So if you're using OneDrive, that's your cloud for OneDrive. You can drag from there. And so I, real quick, like, I'm just going to upload something pretty quick right here. So let me go right here to my documents. And... We're just going to do a short P. Okay, here, here's one. All right, so I've got this PowerPoint right here. It's only a few slides, so it won't take too long for it to load. It does take a second for it to process and all, but you'll go through, like I said, I'm using my phone, so it might be a little slow, and you'll upload your process, file process. And then the cool thing about this is then when you get in, you can start adding in activities. Um, one of the things that, that you can do is you could actually add in a video and then you can put questions in to the video. So if you've got a YouTube video or video you've made, you can load this into the platform and then it'll make them answer those questions before the video continues. It's almost like a quiz over what they're watching. And so you can divide it up into segments and it just makes them be accountable of actually watching the video that you gave them to watch. And so that's a big thing. I know all of us have been guilty of turning it on, but then multitasking and all that stuff. Well, this will make them stay glued to it because they do have to answer the questions as it comes to it. So that's one of the things. So it easily it popped up there. And so now you've got this. So now you can go over here where it says add new and it's add content and activities. So you can come over here, you can add more slides, you can add another slideshow, a Sway, if any of y'all use Sway, PDFs, slides, images, audio. So if you've got your slideshow there, maybe you wanted to add audio of what you wanted to say about what was on that slide other than repeating what's sitting on the slide, you had extra stuff to say. So you can add in audio to each of your slides. It's really easy, you just drag and drop that in. You can add in your interactive videos, web content, BBC videos, um, and like I said, y'all might not have some of that. You've got quizzes, draw it, so maybe you've got something you want them to label, a picture you want them to label the parts of, like the heart, parts of the heart or something. You can do like that. You can make them fill in the blank. You can even do memory tests. Um, time to climb is more like a quiz game that they can do. That's more kids stuff, so y'all might not have that at the college level. But um, collaborative discussion board is a real good one. So you've maybe gave them a case study to do and to use, and you may ask some pertinent questions, and maybe it's a pro and con of 
do you think it's this or do you think it's this and why? And then you would say, okay, you post your stuff on the collaborative board, but then I also want you to respond to someone else's post and, and tell me that. And so you could put that in here. You could also put that into your platform. I think y'all use Canvas, is that correct? And so that's another way of flipping the classroom and putting it on them. You can um, do what they call um, import a flip to collect. And so this is flip is another way you could do this is they could record their answer and send it to you and maybe defend what they're saying. So maybe you wanted something where they're practicing that communication skill. <clears throat> I don't know if y'all noticed that this group, this generation of people coming through, they don't have communication skills because they have lived with a phone their whole lives. And that's just another way of teaching them, you know, you need to make eye contact. If you're making it with the camera, maybe that'll help them start making eye contact with people and making them speak out loud and talk to folks. And so that's just another thing. You can take a poll. So say you've talked about something and you've had this whole lesson, you can stick a poll at the end of your lesson of, okay, how strong are you feeling about this? Do I need to go over anything else? And, you know, just kind of that self-check of, okay, have I disseminated this, you know, in a way that they're understanding or do they need some more help? And so that's another way you can do that. You can also ask open-ended questions. And the cool thing is, is all of this stuff will record when they submit it to you. And you'll just go into reports and you can pull down on how they did on the different activities that you've got put into your lesson. So it's just another way of giving them a, a way to interact that is more of what they are seeing in schools today. Um, and, you know, y'all are so busy doing what you're doing because what you're doing is so hard and you've got so much information you've got to disseminate and get out. But a lot of it, especially with the online platform, they've got to read and research it and then they've got to be able to regurgitate it out and understand what they're saying. And I know just from tutoring other students and stuff, when I was in high school, I learned more when I explained it to someone else. And so that that verbal cue and, and stuff with the flip, I think it's a really good thing that you could use with Nearpod. Like I said, it's really not that bad, but you can get it for the college level. And if y'all want something like that, I can get y'all a, a rep out here because I talked to my rep and she said she would pick y'all up. So just, just let me know. And um, so it's that easy to build a lesson. Then um, when you want to start your lesson, I'm just going to jump over here to another one that I've done. All right, so I'm just going to come right here to this lesson right here. So you can look right here. I'm going to save my changes. So say I've got this lesson sitting here. All right, and so now I want to teach it. So I can go to preview and I can go back and review and look and see what I've done. Or I can go to here to teach. You've got two things you can do. You can do live participation. So this is maybe you're standing in front of your class. You're also lecturing. But then at certain points in your lecture, you want them to do uh, a, a, a lesson that's in here. So they can be on their computers, their cell phones, and they can log into Nearpod. And so you could do the live participation. When you do live participation, you are in control of when the slides go. The students cannot move ahead of you. You are in control, and so you're still controlling the timing. They're not moving ahead. They're not looking forward. They're they're with you and there. And so that's your your live participation. If you've got something that basically basically you're wanting them to do at home, then you do student paste. You'll set it up as their own assignment, and it's as easy as that. So it just depends on what platform or how you're teaching. Whether you're in the class or whether you're online, you've got different options that you can give it to them. And then you'll just give them codes. So if I did like student paste, I could click on this and then a code pops up. And so they'll just go to joinnearpod.com and they'll use that code and they'll join the lesson. You can also copy the link. Like you've got your link there. You can email them the link. You can embed it in a website if you've got a website you're using. Um, 
Google Classroom, you can send it in a mind, or mind. You also can send it in Microsoft Teams, because I know y'all are a Microsoft school system too. So you've got different options. So I would just post that link in my Canvas and go for there, and, and that would be the easiest thing. You can set up your calendar or when you want it due, so you just click on that calendar and change your due dates, and it'll close it out, and then that's as easy as that, and that's Nearpod. But like I said, you can put videos in. There's so much stuff we don't have a lot of time, but I did want to show you all that. And if you ever need help, that's why I threw cards out there for y'all. Y'all just let me know. All right. The other thing. Let's see here. I'm trying to stay with where I'm going here. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk to y'all about is Microsoft Education. There is a ton of stuff when you're examining data, when you're doing spreadsheets and all that stuff, and if you just, you're just you not sure how to do it, I've just put this stuff in here so that you've got it as a resource. One of my favorite things is the um, Microsoft um, Quick Starts. And so they've got like one-pager guides of how to do things in Excel, in Outlook, and, and all, of, all of their platforms, and Teams, and programs, and all that stuff. So... I've got that there. You can do online education training of like how to use different things for Microsoft. They have really delved into the education world of using it as a platform to teach from. The only odd thing about it is it was built for business. And so instead of student, it'll, oh gosh, what, or, you know, or instead of teacher, it'll say owner, and participant or something like that. It's got weird like business terminology, but once you kind of get used to it, it's not that bad to look at. And then, so I've got the links on that for y'all here. A plethora of stuff that you can go through and just do online lessons to learn how to do different things. I've learned a lot about Teams and all. And Flip is also in Microsoft Education, it's actually part of your Microsoft platform. You'll see Flip, or it used to be called Flipgrid, which is what we saw in Nearpod just then. Um, Nearpod is also sitting in that Microsoft Education as an app that they pull in and use with their platform. So probably the same is true for Canvas too. I haven't worked with Canvas. I've looked at it for our school system and we decided it was too much. Okay, so this is Flip. So we kind of talked about what it did. You know, they can go through, go through and do like videos and send them back to you. And that's all within the near platform, Nearpod platform. But you've also got um, Flip where you can just log into it and go through that platform if you wanted to, to do assignments. So I wanted to give you this. It's also free for teachers. Um, I think that you don't get all the bells and whistles with it. But one of the things that we did, which is kind of weird is we had to read a book, identify a problem in the book, and then we had to video ourselves using Flip, engineering and constructing a solution to the issue that we had discovered. In, and discovered. And so I, I'm not sure how you could apply that to clinicals and nursing or whatever, but maybe you could give them that problem and say, how would you make this easier what could you have done what and make them video and give you that kind or of we could do like a scenario and nursing process mm -hmm. and you could yes. do your scenarios yes. and so quality control yeah mm -hmm. so, yeah. so you've got that program that's really nice i think it will be applicable to what y'all do especially you know dealing with the online stuff okay this was just some stuff i was looking at Brainscape is flashcards, and it's flashcards for medical terminology and stuff. Maybe you've got that student that's just on the struggle bus and they need some extra help. That was a really neat thing that I found and looked at um, the Ethanems app. I hope I'm saying that right. Not really good. I'm a math person, so reading is not my forte. But um, it, it goes through all like the prefixes, suffixes, and meanings of words and where all this medical terminology comes from. The root, the the root, root. words, yes. And so a lot of times I think people struggle with that. 
because you know in English we've just taken every language and made it ours and so if that that Latin and Greek roots I think it makes a really really big difference I know it helped me because I took Latin in seventh grade and then I had Spanish in high school and then I took German in college and just I understand English so much more now because I've, I've looked at all those languages and I'm like, okay, well, that's where that came from. And so now you know where sing, sang, and sung come from. It's singing, sang, and sung, and drinking, drinking, drinking from German. And so, you know, all those weird verbs, you know, that's where we get it from. The other one that I found that was really neat was this um, Lecturio Logium. It gives you a whole plethora of one-pagers of different medical things that nurses will use. And I'm going to pull that one up real quick. Just to show you, which I might have it open. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's got a video library. It has got like one page study planners, um, videos, cheat sheets, like these are like the one page nursing cheat sheets that I was, I found and I, I thought, Ooh, they might like that. I mean, y'all could take and download these. It's a seven day free trial, but you've got procedure care plan for nurses, five rights of medication administration, a dumb on assessments and orders and tips. I mean, like there was just all kinds of these little handy dandy one pagers that y'all might could use, like to put as flowcharts. And it may be something you need to modify to, you know, keep it up to date. But this is kind of a relatively new program that I found, and it looked like it could be something y'all could possibly use a resource when you're teaching your classes. I know. One of the biggest things that my teachers are always looking for is new resources and stuff that will help them make it faster and easier. And so this was one I found for y'all that I felt like it would be a good one. Like I said, it's seven days for free, and it's a whole bunch of, of different things. So I'm just going to exile that. But they've got videos, question banks, learning paths. It's almost like a, a Nearpod made for nursing mm -hmm. and that's what it looks like i don't think it's quite as beefy as nearpod as far as like the interaction the of, of, of pulling up your um your powerpoints and all that stuff and loading it in but it does it well it did have some some promise so y'all may want to just look at that one and play with that one so i found that and i thought oh, they might like that do you know how much it is for yeah um i actually got pricing right here Let's see here. This one, it said first seven days for free. If you do the 12 month, it's 20 bucks a month. So, what and. Is, there? Is that all? Yeah, that's it. That's all they've got right there. Um, but it's got like what it does, the video library. It's got registered nurse, RN, licensed practical nurse, LPN, um, the NCLEX, prep, space repetition, Practice for exams, cheat sheets, and it may be something that you want to show your students that they could sign up for and, and use. I mean, it's just, but it's there, and I, I thought it was kind of neat. So it's got the nursing premium, a medical coach, and a medical premium. So they got the different, different formats of that. All righty. Okay, so that was that, and um, Chrome extensions, folks, um, y'all may run into some students every once in a while that have learning disabilities. There's Chrome extensions for a lot of different things, and one of the ones is read, <coughs> read aloud, um, a text-to-speech voice reader. That's something that they should know if they have those learning disabilities, but if you do run into someone, there are tons of people that are undiagnosed. They, they come through our schools, and they're just pushed through. And so you do run into those, those people. And how they make it through is because they're really, really smart. They can sit and they can listen. 
and learn what they need in the classroom. But <coughs> when it comes to reading and stuff, a lot of times they, they do have difficulties with that, and it supports 40 different languages. So that was neat. Um, I got a link there to um, the Chrome Web Store, and it's got all kinds of like AI-powered extensions, um, subscriptions, memberships. Oh, <laughs> you may, I got you. Padlet. Have y'all ever used Padlet? Okay. Padlet is really easy. Let me show y'all that one. I'm just going to get out of the full presentation here and click on this. And so Padlet is another website where it's free, but you've also got paid for plans. But what you can do in Padlet is, let's see. Well, I guess I haven't done one yet. I have one. I think I deleted it. All right, so let's make a Padlet. So you go to Padlet, and I've got a blank board sitting here. I can create it with a lesson plan, or I can do a classroom activities list. I could create it with AI if I wanted to. So I can go right here. Come on. My internet is being ridiculous. All right, so I click on it. I start my Padlet. I'm going to go right here. There it is. There's a panel. So, Mersing. Well, it's Mersing. Close <laughs> enough. Um, and, and I can go right here. I can choose different types. I can choose a grid, a canvas, a map if I wanted to. I could do sections. And so I'm just going to um, go right here and just click on a wall and say done. And then so what it does is it pops up this wall. And so all I've got to do now is click on this. And I can put my subject, okay, all right, and publish. And then I can put different questions in here. So like, say I put in there some kind of question that we've watched a video. Okay, you've watched this video. You can go through and make a list of all the pros and cons that you saw this nurse do. So say you had that video of a nurse doing a clinical or whatever, and they maybe needed to identify the things she did right and the things she did wrong. Um, maybe they need to identify how could she improve what she did here to save time, to be more efficient. Because, you know, just like tying your shoes, there's an order of doing things. And if you do it the right way, it works out good. But then if you do things out of order, I'm sure it's just like that when you go in and work with a patient. You've got to process. You've got these things you've got to do. And so... It's just another little platform, just like your collaboration board in your pod. And this is just one that's free that you can use for like, I think five, five freebies. And then just delete them and you got, you can, as long as you just have five in your platform. Mm -hmm. And so you can just delete them and go. And so that's the kind of stuff you can do. But you can go through and play with that. I'm going to move on because I want to show y'all Snorkel. But that's just another one of those. And like I said, I've got the links to all this stuff in here in this platform. So, all right. So this is the other thing I wanted to show y'all. I've been AI, I don't know if y'all have dealt much with it. Um, how many of y'all played with chat GPT? Yes. Okay. All right. The best thing about chat GPT folks is it will do so much for you because I'm kind of like my sister. I don't know if y'all know her very well, but we are blunt. And when I am in an email and I'm trying to type something up to someone, That's too what I am saying often is just, whoo, and so I had to back up and retreat. And so um, you, you've got all these AI products. I know y'all use Grammarly. AI is in Grammarly. There is an AI component in Grammarly, and you can tell it what tone you want it to be in. And so you can put your point that you want to get across in there. And then it'll take it and make it all sweet and, <laughs> and soft and, 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 soft and touchy-feely so that we don't hurt our little babies. But AI resources. Um, Daniel Rivera, he works at our first district, RISA, which is like a regional educational training center that they have in Georgia. They have them in different regions. And he has delved into AI, his boss told him, go with it and learn everything you can. And so I've been going to all these workshops and stuff that he does. And what I have got linked 
is the last workshop I went to, all of his AI resources and descriptions. And th these are things that he has went through and vetted and said, okay, this is good to use. I do know that a lot of times stuff I can't get into at work is it's being blocked, but it's fine to use. I have to go to my personal Google account and it'll open right up. Like chat GPT-4 that I pay for $20 a month. I pay for it and it's worth it. It does take you up to 2023. If you're using the free version, any data that you pull from chat GPT is from, from 2021 or before. It, it stops. And so it's not current when you use the free version. So just be aware of that when you're doing stuff. And I don't know, have y'all, any of y'all looked at Copilot since y'all were Microsoft, since y'all were using Office 365? Copilot pulls from Jap GPT 4, but the way it works, and this works with Chat GPT, you know how you can go through and you can give it information and then it'll regurgitate out a summary or whatever, and you'll go, no, this is too long. I need you to focus on this and minimize this and take this out, and it'll do that. It'll do it for so long, but after so many, what they call coins, after so many uses of it, it starts losing that memory, okay? Especially with the free version. And Copilot is the same way, and it actually doesn't give you quite as much without being the paid for version. But it's there. The thing I like about Copilot is it actually gives you links to the resources oh, nice. that it's pulling from. Now, do you check them and make sure they're valid? Yes, you do. You go through it, you check those links. Whereas ChatGPT, would make up. It has what they call hallucinations and it will um, make up a source of, I got this from X, Y, and Z, blah, 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 and it's not a real source. And and it'll do that. And it's, it's actually got a term, it's called hallucinations, and so it'll, you know, if it can't find exactly what it's looking for, it'll make it up and say, this is my source. Um, so it's, um, just be aware when you're using AI, you do still have to be smarter than he is at some time. So it's got its shortcomings, but it's got its good thing. One thing that I had to do personally, how many of y'all have ever gotten a list of students and it's first name, last name, and you needed that list to be the opposite? With the right prompt in chat GPT, and I'll just show y'all what I did real quick. I've got it pulled up right here. As a matter of fact, I went through, and the, the biggest key to this is telling it exactly what you want in a way that it can understand it. And so I said, given a list of student names that are listed first name, last name, rewrite the list where it is last name, comma, first name. This is the list of student names. And then I pasted in that list, and then ChatGPT took all those student names and it put them in last name, first name order so that I was able to copy paste those back into my spreadsheet and now I can order it in alphabetical order real easy in my Excel spreadsheet. So does it have some data processing stuff that is good? Yes. Um, Claude.ai is another good resource. And all of these is on that link in here. I mean, there are tons of them. Can't go through them all. And I'm trying to hurry because I know we got so much I wanted to show y'all. I want to show y'all snorkel. Okay, so this next one um, is just um, vocabulary. It's wrapping vocabulary. I don't know how much that would apply to um, older kids, but sometimes rhyming does help people remember things, so it might be something you want to look at, but I know Nearpod. All right, I know Quizlet has a bad name, but I wanted to show y'all what a friend of mine, she teaches um, CNA classes at the high school, and what she did, what she did was she she does a lot of stuff on her own, and she puts it in there, and because she's put it in there and she's made it and she's created it, then it's to the point that it needs to be. It's not just fluff and it's not skipping standards because she's made her own things and put them in. And so her name is Teresa Mosley. She's been a, a nurse for years and then she retired from nursing and, and came in and started teaching at the high school. So I'm going to go to... My, this was my test classroom because they were actually having some technology issues the other day with this. And so 
my my friend Garrett, he's like, hey, I'm putting something in there, and I got an email saying that I needed to look at it. So this is one she did, and this is just the kind of stuff you can do. And so she's got all these pictures. So you can do flashcards. You can do learn. You can actually test yourself or match. And so you could make this stuff. And this is just stuff that kids could use to study. So I know it's a game, and I know it's kind of crazy. So I could pick mandible, and then I could come right here, and I could click the picture. And so it just goes through, and it times it and says how long it takes. And so I could do, like, temporal, and I hope that's it. I think that's it. And, yeah, I learned all these just a few minutes ago doing this. And so this is just – this was – I mean, I did this, and I actually learned the parts, and it didn't take that long. And so it gave me that muscle memory with that visual code, too. Mm -hmm. And because I didn't know the vocabulary, I was able to go through and learn them in, like, two minutes. And I had the part labeled and all that stuff. So it can be used. Uh, quiz, it, quiz is, those kind of things. You can use it, but what the problem is, is they're probably going out there and they're finding stuff that other people made, and that's what's not up the stuff. And so just tell them, hey, you know, this is something that I've made you can use to study with. But I wouldn't just go out there willy-nilly and find stuff because it could be just a kid made it themselves mm -hmm. to help themselves study. And, and there's a lot of that out there, but it can be used appropriately, and it worked well. It just, you know, it's one of them deals where of who's using it and how is it being used. And I think that goes with anything with technology is is who's who's using it and how they're using it. That's one thing. Okay, and then snorkel. I want to show y'all snorkel. I love this. But before I show y'all that, let me just show you what I did. Okay, so I was trying to make a snorkel lesson. And I found this great picture of a heart. And so I stuck it in Canva. And I'm like, well, I don't want the words there. And so I just copied it. And I came over here. And I actually took that picture. And I'm going to show you how to do it with this one. So if I click on this picture right here in Canva, I can go to Edit Photo. And then I can go right here to Background Remover. So if there's a background you want to go on, it'll take a background off. I can go right here to Magic Eraser. And then I just brush over what I want to get rid of and it will disappear all those words. And then it left all those nice little lines that were already drawn for me. And I just took this picture off of the internet and then I went over here and then I, you know, I did my editing over here, but then I was trying to figure out what the names of everything were. Cause you know, I, like I said, I'm not the science person here. And so I did that. And that's what's going to help me do something in Snorkel. Snorkel is an AI app. And I love it because it's got that explanation piece where they have to record themselves explaining what they're doing. And so what I did in Snorkel was I took the picture of the heart that had everything labeled with numbers. And I put it in there. And then... I took all those words there and I went over to Copilot and I said, define these at the college level. And so it did. And then I take all of that and I copy paste it into Snorkel for the answer. It was so nice. And then the student will get the assignment and they have to verbally explain what each part is on there. It does have like a drawing portion where they can draw in and label different things, mm -hmm. but it grades the verbal explanation and gives them feedback of what they missed and what they didn't miss. You feed in those keywords that you're looking for and the answer you're looking for, and it'll grade it based on that. Now, AI will generate an answer that might not be up to hard for you. You can go in and edit anything. So like literally I took this picture of this heart and I scanned it in and then it gave me the list of what it thought the parts were and then the definitions. And so they were off because this is a brand new AI program that's come out. But once I put it in and I got my definitions from Copilot, just copy pasted it into it. Then you've got that automatic feedback to the student, and it'll give you a summary of all of your students' work, 
or you can look at individual work. So this is snorkel. So let me show you. So I wanted y'all to kind of do this with your phones. Scan that and that'll join. You can join my class. Let's do this one. Let's see if this will work. If you'll scan that one right there. And let me make it bigger so you can actually scan it with your phones. And you could see what it looks like from the student's point of view. Let's see if it'll scan. There's the bottom leaving. And it should take you into the actual part assignment that I'm going to I think Google. so. You can just use Google to log into it. And so... I oh, see so you record. I see where it says yeah, record. Yeah, you will record your answer. Write or draw. Mm -hmm. So I gave you instructions. I said, you know, use the number of labels for the heart to verbally identify and define what each part um, function is in the human body. You know, just whatever. And so then this pops up on your screen. So then you can go through and record. You can also draw, you can erase, you can add in pictures as a student. So this is what it looks like on the student's side of things. I just want y'all to see what it was. And so you can go through and mash record and it says, start explaining, Snorkel AI gives feedback on your verbal explanation. So you can go through and practice and see what you think. Answer it wrong, answer it right, whatever you want to do. So I wanted y'all to look at that and then I'll show y'all what it looks like on the teacher's side. So this is like really new AI. This is brand new AI program. It's in beta testing right now and it's free until August. But I think it's going to be a powerful tool. Yet again, it's making them speak out loud, explain out loud. And, you know, they've got the drawing capabilities they can draw on the object and I know we try to reach all the senses and so it does hit a lot of things. How long is the free trial? I think it's until August. I think August they're supposed to be through with the beta testing and, and go through because it's it is brand spanking new and y'all if you do do the demo comes together they're doing the beta testing now but it's free for now. Yeah. So I mean it's something to play with and look at because I really think it gives a different edge to things and a little more interaction because it's got the whiteboard they can go through and say, hey, you know, you should have cut here or you should have done this. So um, that snorkel, if you look at it from the teacher side, and so you've got your home place. It's got teaching about snorkel. You've got try as a student. So it's gave you some practice stuff here. You can go to your classes. So like if you join my classes, I would be able to see all the people that had joined my class. I don't have any people in my class. I don't teach students. So don't. So then I've got this nursing example. And so I can go here. If I click on this, this is where I can go in and edit. So when I actually created the lesson, I, I put in the heart. And then it came up with, um, I had the instructions, and then I hit autofill with AI, and then it gave up, it gave, came up with like a, a prompt question that you could list. Yes. I mean, you may need to tweak it. It came up with that. And then the expected answer, it came with a, an expected answer. Like I said, it did not meet my criteria. And so then I just went over to, you know, Copilot or ChatGPT, I can't remember which one I used, and put in the list of words, that's and it right. defined them. And I told it, you know, hey, I want this at a college level, and that's exactly what it did. It gave me everything at a college level, and it even, you know, said, please note the exact naming can be um, very slightly using this valve and this valve and so on and so forth. So it did, no, you know, no. note that, and so I just left that in there. And so then... You just hit done, or you can assign it to the people. So if I hit assign and next, and so, it, you know, I picked the class that I want to give it to, and I hit next, and that was what I had gave y'all, y'all saw. And then so you can set it so students can see their peers' work, and I said no. And students can um, make student, student comments, and I said no, but it may be something that you want them to talk to each other about, and you want them to make comments about, and they can. 
you can do that. It's all up to you. So you assign it, and then it gives you a link to the activity. So you just copy that link and put it into you your platform, and there it is. And then it'll go through and give you the results and the summary and all that. And I just, I thought it was kind of cool. And y'all, I mix and match platforms and things, and I just take and this makes this easier. So I'll take that and I'll pull that in here. And I think that's the biggest part of the technology is, is learning what you can use to make it easier and what you can use with each. No, you cannot break it. Because anybody, if, if you mess up your computer, hey, hey, I did it. The day before a huge technology conference we had for our school district that me and my friend were in charge of and made it. I clicked on an email from a vendor that we deal with and she had been hacked and then automatically, but the way we've got our stuff set up with Windows Defender, within 40 seconds, my whole account was deleted. My Google account, my Microsoft Office account, everything was deleted so that they couldn't use my account to go do anything else. And so then they recovered my account, created a new password, but it took over a day for all my stuff to come back and I thought I had lost everything because I was freaking out. So can something go wrong? Yes, but it can be recovered if you've got a good technology department. And I do have a, a super fly wonderful technology department. And so, but you personally cannot break it. If something doesn't go right, you can hit delete and start over. I mean, that is my motto. I do it all the time. And so that is that, and then I know it's 10 teal, and I just wanted to get y'all to do just one real quick, I don't know, this was fast today, and I have not covered everything that I was going to talk about. I was going to show y'all, like, um, Adobe Firefly. You can create images that are just fun and pretty to make your stuff fun and pretty. And so you can do image creation in Canva, but Adobe Firefly, I love it. It's just so pretty, Adobe Firefly. And so, um, but there's all these image creators. I've got them listed here. I mean, uh, Adobe Firefly is free, 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 free. Um, you've also got, and here's here's the link to Adobe Firefly on the next slide. So this is also um, considered an image editing tool. And so these are all like AI editing tools. And well, see that right there? That's AI generated. That's, I, I told it to make it like look like a real person. And and all I mean, but that's that's AI, and that was using Adobe Firefly. To me, it's the the it's best. best that I found. Um, it's not quite so creepy. What will creep you out if you really start looking at different platforms and how they create hands? They are very very lacking in that department. And like I said, I mean, even her hand looks a little off but it's not as bad she as some have of the fingers. other yeah I, I have seen 10 <laughs> uh, and i've seen like the, the claw you know so i mean there's a adobe firefly is super fly one and so i'm gonna make this big again and present if y'all will please do a um just a quick evaluation so i know how to do this stuff better i'd appreciate it but thank y'all so much. And I know y'all got to go to the bathroom and get ready for class and all that good stuff. But I thank you so much. I hope y'all enjoy it. And I hope y'all showed y'all some stuff that y'all can